I'm a drug user, I'll admit it. Weed is my usual go-to, but I buy that off my friend. If I want to get something a little heavier, however, like acid or coke, I'd just order it off the dark web. It's surprisingly simple. A few clicks, some bitcoin transfers, and boom, I have acid in my P.O. box. But I'm also a curious guy. The dark web has always intrigued me. Up until a few days ago, I had only been on there to buy drugs off sites some of my friends gave me. But late one night, I was sober and at home, which was a rare thing for me. So since I was bored, I decided to boot up my tour browser and try and see what sort of messed up stuff I could find on the dark web. If you've ever been on the dark web, you'll know that you can't just search up red rooms or hitmen for hire and get results. No, you have to find links to these websites first. So I hopped back on Google in an attempt to find some links to some messed up websites. I know it's weird that I was actively searching for the worst, but as soon as I got on the dark web that night, I had this weird sense of morbid curiosity that overcame me. Anyway, I spent a little while trying to find some links, but anything that I found was either too tame for me, or the links didn't even work. At this point, I was ready to give up, but in one final attempt, I clicked on reddit. I hopped on r slash deep web, but I didn't think I would find anything. I scrolled through the hot option for about half an hour before sorting to new, and that's when I found it. It was one simple text post titled Slayer's Assassination and Life Ruining Services. The text box of the post was what seemed to be a random assortment of numbers and letters. It took my tired brain a second to figure out what it was, but I realized pretty quickly it was a link presumably to a Hitman website. So I decided to paste the link into my dark web browser, and what do you know? It worked, but before I decided to go any further, I figured I should go back to the profile to see if they have posted any other dark web links, but when I went back to the post in question, the profile was deleted. Weird. Anyway, I reopened the dark web and hopped onto the site. Up along the top of the website was its name, Slayer's Assassination and Life Ruining Services, and next to it was what looked to be a skull inside of a crosshair. I chuckled when I saw it, I figured the site must have been fake. Upon scrolling down, however, I was not disappointed. There was a paragraph of white text on a black background, and a small box to the right of the text that just said place an order. The text was the main part though, as it took up most of the page. It proceeded to list all the forms of killing they were able to do. Again I laughed, this had to be satire, right? Hell, I was even tempted to order it on someone, just to see what would happen. Better not to risk it though, I thought to myself. I was about to close my computer and call it a night when I heard a knock at the door. I live alone, so it was unusual to get visitors, especially so late at night. But when I opened my door, it was just my good buddy Mark, who also happened to be my weed plug. As I opened the door, he didn't hesitate to let himself in and shove a huge bag full of pot in my face. He said he got a really expensive kind and asked if I wanted to try some with him. I couldn't say no. Cut to a couple hours later. It's early morning, and Mark and I are chilling on my couch, both completely out of it at this point. He suddenly decides to get up, and I assume he's going to get some leftover pizza, but he walks over to my desk and computer. Slayer's assassination? Are you gonna kill someone or something? He mutters. What? I replied. Your computer, dude. It's got some hacker stuff on it. It's the dark web, man. Don't mess with it. I said. At this point, I'm still on my couch, half asleep and not paying full attention. However, I sat up pretty fast when I heard the words, Hey dude, let's order a hitman on you. I got up and walked over to my PC. Part of my brain was screaming no, but at the same time, with the state I was in, the majority of my brain was thinking about how funny it would be to order a hitman on myself. So I agree. At the end, after I wrote down all my personal details, like my address, my age, and even a photo of me, I had to select what I wanted to happen to me. I just selected plain old assassination, as it was actually cheaper than some of the other things. Anyway, I placed the order, and then replied to the confirmation email, and boom, it was done. A couple clicks and I had ordered myself a hitman on the dark web. Mark and I laughed for a while, but then he left about an hour later and I fell asleep not too long after. I woke up around 9am, which meant I got at least 6 hours of sleep, even if I felt like I got 3. I got up out of bed and brewed myself a coffee before sitting down to play some games and just enjoy my Sunday. But you can imagine how shocked I was when I saw I had ordered my own death the previous night. 
Even though I thought the sight was BS, I still felt a pit open up in my stomach. Even when I'm high, I can usually make sensible decisions. I chuckled, not like I could remember it anyway. I would assume a normal human being would do something else, but I was still kind of out of it from the night before, so I just carried on with my day. I was a little paranoid, sure, but as I said, I just assumed it was BS. I even laughed at the email I got from the website, saying that the hitman had been dispatched and was on its way. Later that night, a blacked out sedan parked on the other side of the road from my house. I didn't see it arrive, but around the time I started to cook myself some dinner, I noticed it out the kitchen window. Now, I didn't live in a rural area, but there were a lot of trees and bushes between each of the houses on my street, so I would be surprised if any other house saw the car except for mine. At this point, I was freaking out. What if the sight was real? Even though I'm a big guy, I was still freaking out. I don't own any weapons, aside from a slightly larger than average kitchen knife. Screw it, I'm confronting it, I decided. I put on a hoodie and slid the kitchen knife into my front pocket before walking out of my house and right up to the driver's side window of the vehicle. Even I was astonished at my own courage. I knocked on the window, but nothing happened. It was rather anticlimactic. I was fully prepared to have a fight for my life, all because I did something really dumb while I was high off my mind. But, like I said, nothing happened. I even put my head right up to the window, as if there was a reflection, to try and get a better look to see what was inside. I could barely see anything, but I could make out two empty seats. No one was even inside. I had got all hyped up for nothing. I decided to wait out by the car for a bit, but after half an hour or so, I was hungry and had to go back inside to take my dinner out of the oven. I swear, it was only a minute between me going inside to take my dinner out of the oven and looking back out of the window that the car was gone. I didn't even hear it leave. Guess I'm eating my dinner with all my curtains closed and doors locked, I muttered to myself. I had just started to calm down when the power shut off. And coupled with the car, I now knew this was the real deal. I had signed my own death warrant. I ran into my upstairs bedroom and locked the door. I then hid under the bed. I figured I couldn't call the cops. What would I say? That I ordered a hitman on myself? So I just stayed hiding under my bed. And I still am now. I've been here for about an hour now. I know I'm screwed. Just a minute ago, I heard my back door slowly creak open. A package marked, return to sender. My neighbor's one of those annoying wannabe YouTube personalities. Over the years, I've seen him cough out cinnamon, lay flat on the hood of his car as it slowly creeps down the driveway, and douse himself in lukewarm water. All the while screaming epic win, epic fail, or fuck, epic maintenance of the status quo, for all I know. It can be tiring to watch him go about his shenanigans in the pursuit of viral fame. So, when he knocked on my door the other day, told me he was going away for a few weeks, and asked that I get his mail, honestly, it was a relief. I can't explain the peace of mind I had knowing I didn't have to brace myself for any of his stupidity for a while. I was always afraid his stunts would wind up bleeding over into my life. Things were pretty normal for the first couple of days. He received a few bills, a bit of spam, and what I could only assume was a birthday card. Then, one evening... I got home to find a cardboard box waiting on his front porch, in big red letters written, Return to Cinder. I'm no small fry, but I admit I had trouble lifting the box on my own. It was really freaking heavy. Lugging it across the road to my house was even harder, and I quickly realized there was no way I was going to drag it up the stairs, through my front door. I decided I'd leave his package in my garage. It wasn't like I kept my car in there. The garage door was a piece of shit that refused to open without a good thug or a whack. It was less trouble just leaving the car in the driving way than it was to fight with the garage door every morning and night. In hindsight, I should have set the package down while I struggled to open the tricky door. But you know how it is when you've got a good grip on something. No point in setting it down if you don't have to. It was as I kicked the door for a third time that I lost my grip on the package, and it fell to the ground. I heard a light crack inside. Shit! I cursed. I hope I hadn't broken anything important, but figured I just wouldn't tell my neighbor about it and... Let him assume the break happened en route. Hands free, I finally managed to get the garage door unstuck. 
and boy did it screech in protest as it rolled up and over me. I dragged the box the rest of the way, setting it in the corner for whenever my neighbor would come back to claim it. And then, I forgot all about it, until a few days passed, that is. I'm not exactly sure how long it took for the smell to waft in from the crack under the garage to the house door, but it came in slow progression. It was a sickly sweet odor smell similar to a skunk, and for the first few days after I smelled it, I genuinely assumed that's exactly what it was. Roadkill that it left its mark on my house. It was only when I realized the scent was growing more intense instead of fading away that I looked for a source. That's when I opened the garage door, and that's when the odor knocked me back, holding my nose. The culprit wasn't hard to identify. The only change in my garage was the box in the corner. I remember thinking it must have been one of those meat of the month subscription boxes. The meat must have gone rancid from being left out from the fridge for so long. How much meat could have been in there for the box to have been so freaking large and heavy? An entire freaking cow? I covered my nose as I approached the box, a pair of scissors in my hands. I probably wouldn't have needed them to open it, as it had become soggy enough at the bottom to poke through with the finger. But I wasn't about to poke my finger into spoiled meat juices. That soggy bottom was the reason I had to open the box in the first place. If I tried to drag it out whole, everything would spill out onto the floor. I was going to have to dump the pieces of meat one garbage bag at a time and take them down to the dumpster, a process I wasn't looking forward to. My scissors tore through the tape along the top of the cardboard box. I thought the smell couldn't get any worse, but as I flipped the flaps open, I discovered a whole new gamut of stink. It was like opening a burning oven, but instead of a heat wave, I was met with waves of piss, sweat, and shit, and putrefaction. It was so bad that I staggered back and had to force down the puke, begging to guzzle out of me. I don't think I could have handled that scent mingled with the horrors coming out of the box. I'm not ashamed to admit I ran out of the door for a breath of fresh air, but in the short time I'd spent in the garage, the smell had become so ingrained in the fabric of my clothes that it clung to me like a shadow. Nothing I tried could keep the smell out of my nostrils. Not air fresheners, not a face mask, not three showers and a change of clothes. Every second that the box lay open in my garage was another second the smell was allowed to foothold into my house was another second the smell was allowed a foothold into my home. I had to bite the bullet. I returned to the garage, the flaps of the box still open as though inviting me to look. I was prepared. A clothespin pinning my nostrils shut, a garbage bag in one hand, the strongest cleaner I could find in the other, and long rubber gloves to keep my skin from having to touch what was inside. But as it turns out, I needed none of those things. I wouldn't have to touch or clean the contents of that box. I would only have to suffer the nightmares every night. You see, there was meat in that box, but it didn't come from a cow or a pig. No, it was worse than that. It was my neighbor, dead. Still in one piece, but dead. I called the cops and naturally they took me in for interrogation. It's kind of hard not to suspect the man with a corpse in his garage after all. Thankfully, they soon realized I wasn't involved. My DNA might have been all over that box, the smell might have left a mark throughout my house, but there was one piece of irrefutable evidence in my neighbor's own hands that proved my innocence. A vlogging camera. They showed me the footage only once. I'm not sure if they were allowed to, or if they felt so bad for me they figured it couldn't hurt. Either way, I saw it. My neighbor was sitting in the box outside of a shipping facility, laughing as he told the world how he was going to mail himself across state lines. He'd brought pee bottles, food, a pillow, and a few flashlights. His friends, a guy I'd seen in his place several times to help with his stunts, closed the lid and presumably dropped him off for shipment. Throughout the next couple of hours or days, I'm honestly not sure, my neighbor recorded a few short clips about his progress. I think I'm in a truck now. I can feel it moving. Must be in a warehouse. Pretty warm here. Still got plenty of food. That kind of stuff. The box toppled over. He broke his neck and that was it. The camera recorded until either the memory card got too full or the battery died. There's one thing I didn't tell the police after they showed me the video. One thing I heard in the footage that will haunt me to the day I die. Just after the tumble that broke his neck, I heard the familiar screeching sounds of my garage door. <laughs> 